Hello and welcome into our final edition of Catamount Football Weekly as we talk Western Carolina Catamount Football with head coach Mark Spear. I'm Daniel Hooker and coach, we talked about opportunity going into that South Carolina game, the last opportunity for your guys to perform on the field as a team here in 2016, an opportunity for your seniors to play one more time and what an opportunity and what a great uh, return your guys had in that ball game against South Carolina. I had to make a lot of the Catamount Nation extremely proud. Well, I was awful proud of the way our men went out and played. They, they fought for 60 minutes. That's what we asked them to do. And, uh, we went down there with the next play mentality, whether uh, the last play was good or bad, that we were going to play the next uh, play with, with everything we had. And, and uh, you know, the guys went out and did that. They had a great week of practice. And, uh, you know, the, uh, we went down there to win. And, and that was our mentality. And, and our players, uh, they did that. And, uh, you know, we came up short on the scoreboard, but, uh, you know, I, th I thought it was a, a great effort uh, by all three phases. You know, they overpowered us a little bit with their big offensive line, uh, you know, with our defensive unit, but they battled. We, you know, we stopped them on a fourth down and got them out off the field on some, some third downs, uh, you know, uh, uh, we had some missed opportunities on on defense too to get them off the field, and uh, you know same thing on offense. I thought we moved the ball consistently all day. Uh, we had a missed opportunity down there on the goal line with you know a first and goal on the one and we don't punch it in, and um, you know but uh, we weren't going to kick field goals because we went down there to win and uh, felt like uh, you know when you get down there you got to come away with with. Uh, with seven points, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, Detrez had another big day, uh, his, his third SEC opponent in a row that he's gained 100 yards, took a, a kickoff back to the house, you know, and earned a national special teams player of the week, but, uh, you know, had another great day with all-purpose yards, uh, setting a, beating his own record, so uh, Detrez just continues to, to be productive and shine, and and uh, be a marquee player. You know, I feel like he's one of the best players in this country at this level. But uh, on the whole, it was a it was a good day because our men went down there with a purpose. It shows that uh, you know, in the right mindset, playing the way we're capable of playing, um, you know, we can play with anybody in the country. And uh, it was at least gives you. Um, you know, some, some good bright spots to go out, go finish the season and, and propel you into the offseason. Coach, you mentioned Detrez Newsham getting 100 yards rushing. That put him over the 1,000-yard mark for back-to-back -back seasons. Only the third catamount running back to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back campaigns with one more coming up next year. What does that mean for your program? What does that mean to the offense to know that they may have struggled at times this year but still managed to have a 1,000-yard rusher? Well, it, it says what we're capable of doing, and, and that's a offensive team effort there. You know, Detrez doesn't uh, get a thousand plus on his own. It takes uh, receivers and O linemen and tight ends blocking and um, for him up front. And, uh, you know, we've got pretty much our whole offense back. We lose uh, Ethan James, our center, and uh, Spearman Robinson, um, a wide receiver, and then. Mike Helms, one of our tight ends. So basically, we lose three guys with a lot of playing experience, but uh, we've got a majority of the offensive line back, a good core of receivers. And, uh, you know, we, we lost early in the year Tyler Sexton to injury and was supposed to be a senior, but he was a preseason all conference guy who will be back. So, uh, you know, offensively, we've got everybody back and, and uh, with our offensive linemen getting older, you know, we started a freshman and two sophomores this year up front. Um, they've gotten valuable experience, and, and all those guys back uh, just gives you a lot of, uh, of excitement about what uh, our offense can bring in 2017. And, you know, and obviously Detrez is the not only the cowbell for the offense, but, you know, he's our leader and, and uh, you know, the face of our program right now. And, and just a, a great guy, accountable guy, and a great guy that we're excited about leading us into 2017. You talk about all those guys on offense. You didn't mention one, Tyree Adams, who had an outstanding <laughs> year, who's 
a probable front runner for several uh, uh, postseason awards, including maybe a national freshman of the year. Talk about Tyree's development from day one, from where you saw him during preseason coming in and what was supposed to be a three-horse race at the beginning of the year and how it finished up this season for Tyree Adams. Well, Tyree came in and had a you know, really good year for a freshman. Uh, he uh, grew up and and uh, you know, from game one, we remember talking about him at East Carolina. It doesn't seem like that long ago the poise he had in the pocket and uh, how productive he was. We did have to limit him all year long because um, once Kalen Whitlow transferred early, you know, two days before preseason, and then uh, at the Citadel game when Wes Holcomb broke his leg, we were down to one uh, scholarship quarterback on campus, and uh, we were between bringing uh, uh, DeAndre Belton, uh, a guy who played quarterback in high school, and C.J. Goodman, one of our receivers, who, who played quarterback in high school, um, just kind of piecing a backup quarterback plan together all season. But what uh, maybe folks don't realize, or maybe they do, I know our opponents were starting to figure that out, is we weren't running Tyree this year. And that's a huge part of our offense. You see, you know, Saturday we just said, hey, let's run him just like we normally do. And, you know, you take away the sacks we had, he had 110 yards rushing. Now he ended up with 93 because of sacks on passing plays. But, he, you know, that's a huge part of the offense that we were missing all year because if we would got him injured, we were basically down to wildcat like we had to start the Mercer game. Or, you know, if, uh, you know, bringing C.J. Goodman, who, who's not a college quarterback. He's a good wide receiver, but not a college quarterback. But so, you know, we didn't, Tyree didn't get to reach his full potential as a player because we had to really, you know, make him one dimensional uh, because of our depth at that position. And uh, th that hurt us throughout the year because we had the young O lineman. And, People knew we weren't running Tyree because of injuries. And so, you know, the, he wasn't a threat on the edge. So when we would hand that ball off to Detrez, um, you know, they're like piranhas getting to, to the line. And, and so that's why at times we struggled this year, uh, just because we didn't have our full offense in. And as you see, uh, you know, Tyree comes in and, you know, adds 100 yards of rushing against South, an SEC opponent, and uh, we were missing that all year. So we'll be excited to get uh, West back healthy, which he uh, is scheduled to be 100% for spring, and then uh, you know going out and recruiting one, maybe two quarterbacks in this recruiting class. That makes it even more impressive seeing what Detrez was able to do, finishing up with over 1,000 yards with what defenses were able to do, keying on our run game with him being the focal point of that. Of course, the development of Connell Young and, and Corey Holloway behind him. But Coach, look at defense. And that's what a lot of our Catamount fans are going to look at as, as one of the areas that, that had struggles this year. And you talk about depth on offense. That was one of the big problems we had on defense, just not a whole lot of depth back on the defensive line, back in the linebacking core, the injuries to Daniel Riddle that sidelined him for a big part of the year and hampered him a big part of the year. But talk about those deep, that defensive side of the ball and what you're looking at moving forward. Well, you know, those guys battled, but uh, we, we had a lot of injuries uh, early in the year. Uh, you know, Xavier Dunn, Tyler Junius, both with bad ankle springs. There's two starting defensive tackles. Uh, Daniel Riddle, you know, he had the ripped uh, abdominal muscle. And the only thing that, that could heal that was complete rest. I mean, he couldn't work out, couldn't run. And, and so you miss him the, the first half of the season. Um, and then we had, you know, between injuries and uh, a couple of concussions in our secondary with, with guys like Trey Hardy and, uh, you know, Fred Payne had, had – uh, twisted ankle a uh, couple of games there midseason. We just uh, kind of the perfect storm hit our defense. I knew going in, and, and I believe I even said it in preseason, I knew we had to stay healthy on defense because we didn't have a lot of uh, depth on defense. And, you know, we, we, anytime you have coaching change, um, sometimes you lose players. And we lost a couple of players that decided to transfer early in the year on our defensive line and in our linebacking core. So, um, you know, and then we had the mid-year change of uh, in defensive coordinator. And so, 
Yeah, our defense did struggle this year, and, and we were uh, very poor against the run, uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I've been really on the, de you know, I wanted to finish the year uh, not just bringing somebody in, uh, defense coordinator. I've, I'm, as a matter of fact, over the Thanksgiving holidays, we're, we're going to be talking to three uh, candidates, uh, what I feel like are impressive candidates for our defense coordinator. So that's where it all, it all starts is we've got to hire a defense coordinator, and I hope to have that done uh, early uh, December uh, because we've got to get that guy out on the road. We signed a recruiting class, class last year. You know, Coach Quinn left last year about early to mid-January, and um, so we end up signing a class of, uh, you know, without a defense coordinator. We obviously can't go do that again. and. Um, so my plans are to have a defense coordinator in here early December, and then it starts with going out and, and recruiting some quality depth. We, we've got a lot of scholarships to give this year, and a lot of those will, will be devoted to the defense side of the ball. And uh, you know we've got to get some guys back healthy and get uh, guys like Daniel Riddle and uh, just we had so many injuries like a lot of people do when you don't have depth. And then the problems we, we had with mid-season coaching change, it just, um, it just wasn't a recipe for, a, for to, to go have a successful defense. But I was proud of the way our guy, guys responded. They played hard. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and I thought they really did. We did some good things last Saturday against the University of South Carolina. So that gives you a lot of hope. And, and moving forward, we've got to have a great offseason. Uh, with Coach Barr, and um, you know that started yesterday. I mean, we didn't give them Thanksgiving off. We went yesterday and and uh, Tuesday, and um, you know then we'll give them a little Thanksgiving, and then we got three weeks. And we're gonna get after it before exams start, and then we've got a great plan put together for for this off season, and we're gonna go uh, spring ball a little earlier this year. Um, so that we can not get it done, but get it done effective, efficiently and get it done. But we also want to have more time after spring ball for Coach Barr to really focus on getting our guys bigger and stronger. You know, that was with some youth on offensive line and then lack of depth on defensive line. Um, you know, there were times uh, it was quite obvious that our, you know, we weren't, as strong or as big um, as uh, in the trenches as we need to be. And obviously, um, we realize that, and that's a big focus point that we've already been talking about with our football team. And, uh, you know, having a great plan as far as going to uh, address, you know, what gives Coach Barr the best and most, of, you know, opportunities. Uh, and the best way to get our, our players the biggest and strongest, and then that will lead right into summer, and then she will be uh, getting ready to get on a plane and go to Hawaii before we all know it. Well, Coach, I uh, would be remiss if we didn't talk about the third phase of your game, the special teams. And you look at Ian Berryman punting this year, a single season record for overall average on punts. And Logan Howard with a career-long field goal this year. Depth at that position is you had Christian Stewart who started the year for you. You've got Destry Barnwell, another all-conference caliber punter, backing up an all-conference caliber punter. Talk about your special teams unit. Losing a big guy there up front with Chandler Adderton this year, but talk about your special teams. Well, Chandler Adderton, uh, senior Unbelievable career. Never in four years had a bad snap. Uh, made so many big tackles uh, downfield. You know, I remember one at Auburn. Uh, they had a dynamic punt returner, and we uh, make a bad kick. It's supposed to be over there near the sideline. It's down the middle of the field, and uh, the guy's unbelievable. And I remember Chandler just hanging on by the shirt tail, uh, and he would have scored that day. But uh, um, you know, Chandler just was an unsung hero, and, and that's what a, a long snapper, unfortunately, is the guy you never heard of. And, and when he's great, you never heard of him because you usually hear of him when that snap goes sailing over a punter's head or, or whatever. He was just so steady, and, and just we're going to miss him, Un just not only by his snaps, but also the coverage he provided. He was like another linebacker 
running down there, uh, you know, on our punt team. And then, you know, Ian Barryman, just what a terrific year. I mean, that guy was phenomenal. Flipped the, the field all year long. Um, just, uh, you know, was so consistent just all year long uh, and great attitude. Uh, he tickles me, you know, when he'll have a big kick, he'll just – He's like a third grader on the playground, just runs off the field laughing. And he's a true epitome of it's still a game. And he enjoys playing this game. And, and uh, you know, a lot of times I just look at him and, and uh, you know, we may be getting beat, but I, I say there's a guy that's doing his job and enjoying playing the game. And he's a great example for all of us. You know, and then Logan, Logan didn't have his best year. Uh, on, on par, is, is, for most people, it was a good year. But for him, it was a little down year for him. Missed some extra points and some longer, uh, some, some makeable field goals. But, uh, you know, counting on him to bounce back and have, be an all-conference guy, uh, all-American guy, he, he can do it. And, uh, you know, he's just got to be a little more consistent. But it's good knowing you've got a guy with his caliber leg coming back for two more years that uh, when you need to can put points on the board. And then, you know, you, you go back to Detrez Newsom just, uh, you know, doing his thing as far as a kick returner and, and his all-purpose yards that has a back, you know, not only rushing and, and receiving yardage, but the, the, all the hidden yards and the great starting field position, you know, that, that he provides us in, in those kick returns. So. Uh, you know, we're, we're thankful for the, you know, here at Thanksgiving for those special teams guys, and that's a big part of the game. And, uh, you know, that, that's a phase that won us, no doubt, the VMI game. I mean, it, it was the factor in, in one of our two wins was, you know, blocking all those PATs. And so, uh, you know, I thought uh, we, we, we did a great job. Coach Mills and special teams did a great job this year. Coach, before we look at wrapping up 2016, talk about your senior class one more time. You've hit upon a lot of them because a lot of them were involved in so much of what we did this year here in 2016. With that a senior class, it's always a special time, but you, you like to see them go out with a, a strong effort there against South Carolina. Well, and that'll be a game they'll remember the rest of their lives going down and, you know, going toe to toe. Uh, you know, it's a four point ball game there. I think they're in the third quarter at a point. And so. Uh, you know, we, we had our opportunities to go down and upset an SEC opponent. But, uh, you know, this senior class, um, they've been, you know, through a lot of building and, and reshaping the culture here at Western Carolina. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, there's a bunch of great students that are going to be great, productive young men and great ambassadors uh, for Western Carolina. I had all my exit meetings with them on, on – uh, uh, Monday, and they were just so thankful for the opportunity that they've had here at Western Carolina, and 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 you know to be able to uh, w with our fans, you know, uh, we averaged over ten thousand uh, on the season and created the best atmosphere in SoCon football, you know, and and uh, and they were a big part of that, and they were just so appreciative of what Western Carolina's done for them, you know. I've, Told them all, you know, this isn't a four-year relationship. This is a, a lifetime relationship, and um, that that not only myself but people here at Western Carolina were always going to be here for them. And and I look forward to them coming back and talking as former players. But uh, it, it'll be a you know a bunch of these uh, se senior classes as they go through. You there's uh, you, you just remember. Uh, from going to recruit them to when they were freshmen, to great plays they made, to tough times they had, um, maybe on or off the field, to to being able to watch a couple of them. Uh, you know, we got a couple of them are going to graduate here in December in a couple of weeks, and and then the rest of them are going to graduate in May. And and that uh, our 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 players are graduate. You know, and at the end of the day, they play great college football. Uh, they're going to get a diploma, and they're going to go great, be great husbands and fathers and, and great men and great ambassadors for Western Carolina. And it's just, um, you know, it's, that's the special part of this job that uh, is really cool. Coach, you've mentioned the 
off-season training heading into the early part of spring ball and then more training heading into summer. I think we can already hear the pads popping once again as we look forward to spring ball and of course the opening of fall camp. But what's the one thing you want the squad to learn from this 2016 season to carry over into 2017? It's uh, how to handle adversity and keep just keep fighting. You know, uh, that the last three games I think our, our players um, really really responded to um, you know the situation that, that that we had and and that's a tough time and uh, you know we, we go out and practice in full pads on Sunday I, we were probably the only team in America that did that and, and I wanted these guys to know that life you're gonna have a two and nine um, seasons in your life and people are gonna look at you by how you respond to adversity. You can either let adversity define who you are, or you can define who you are by how you respond to adversity. And, and, and I think this senior class and this football team, by the way they went down and played at the University of South Carolina, said a lot about their character, about who they are, and that, yeah, we, we have learned from this season and that, uh, we're going to do the things that we know we have to do um, to get back to the level that, that our expectations are here at Western Carolina now. And uh, to go out the way we did, I think our, our seniors sent a message and, and our underclassmen sent a message that uh, we weren't going to let adversity define us, that uh, this team was going to go out um, defining who they were by how they handled adversity of a, of a tough season and just couldn't be more proud of them for doing that and uh, you know we're going to get out and recruit we're going to have a great off season uh, I told you one thing I knew was we were going to fight and uh, because I knew who, knew who this football team was and um, you know that wasn't just some battle cry I believed in this team because I know who this team is and who these players are, and uh, they responded to the challenge, and, and they're going to respond to the challenge of the off season. And um, the Cats are going to be back in '17. Uh, got no doubts about that, because uh, these guys are fighters. And speaking to me, and back, we'll be back with you, looking ahead to the 2017 season, with more with Mark Spear with Catamount Football Weekly. Thanks for watching all season long. Daniel Looker saying so long for now.